he didn't think there was an afterlife and I don't either. So neither of us think that this is for him in that sense. It's more for the rest of the world. doing it for him because he was so upset uh, the, the older he got that he didn't achieve the recognition that all his friends who knew about art knew that he deserved. That the, the most important paintings will be the ones that you feel the most when you look at them because you don't always you don't tend to actually understand his paintings necessarily you just get a feeling out of it and sometimes it it just takes your sweeps the feet underneath you I look at a painting and I know whether this is a painting I want to have or not and any discussion of what what is it about the painting comes afterwards as a sort of rationalization my wife for my birthday this is about 30 years ago gave me a painting by Patrick called blue lady number three and as I unwrapped it, I knew this was the painting I wanted to have by me for the rest of my life. And so she said, well, give him a ring. He'll be pleased to hear um, what you think of it. So as I dialed, I thought, bloody hell, he is going to ask, what is it about the painting that you like? And uh, yes, sure enough, his first question was, uh, what is it about the painting that you like? So um, by which time I put together a few thoughts. And the first was that I love the way he combines realism with abstract. So here we have a, a woman lying on some sort of yellow something, but the composition is made by the um, abstract, colorful designs, mainly in the two corners. And it's very rare to find people working in both genres and then combining them with such apparent ease. He was really pleased to hear that what I liked was what he liked about the painting too. And so from that we became friends. And so for the next 30 years or so we talked a lot about his work. He was an old-fashioned, in you know, almost stereotype of an artist living in a garret, living a, a life uh, dedicated to his art, uh, quite in, immune to what people thought about. He found the company of people um, sometimes difficult, uh, although he actually did actually really want the company of people at times and felt very lonely. But um, he did find it difficult, and uh, if if people didn't quite come up to his measure, the measures that he had, then he would become very impatient and completely dismiss them. Which meant that he did live quite a uh, a detached life in lots of ways. So Andrew. Um, was a wonderful friend because he he listened, um, he he observed, and he seemed to understand a lot about Patrick and what his needs were, and and how his um, kind of um, imagination worked, and how he felt about the world. I think, and um, there were very few people like that in uh, Patrick's life. He was a man who could not dissemble. He was a man of total integrity. So I immediately knew if he liked what I was saying about the painting or if he didn't like it. I didn't always get it right. There's one painting called uh, uh, White Room, which he painted at the end of a long period of depression where he hadn't been able to paint at all. And I was visiting him and he said, I've got a painting to show you. And I went into his studio and there was this really small painting of uh, his studio with him in it and there's nothing on the walls nothing going on he's just staring at the blank walls and I said oh Patrick this is terrible I hadn't realized how bad you feel and he shouted no look at the painting the uh, see what he's got in his right hand and in his right hand is a paintbrush and I thought it was a picture of despair and in fact it was a picture of hope the key thing to understanding the painting is something hidden or tiny there's another painting he painted of, a, of an aeroplane. It's an old biplane. And uh, 
you look at it and you think, well, that's quite a nice painting of a biplane, do you see that the pilot isn't looking ahead at all? He's turned round in his seat in the cockpit and he's looking at a tiny man up on a sort of ledge in the top left-hand corner of the painting. And on the top right-hand corner is a tiny door. And the key thing is that merging of two worlds on one piece of canvas because his work is always complex. However simple it looks, there's always more to discover about what he's painted. I think the world is a lesser place, I mean, in a tiny way, but a lesser place if it hasn't had the experience of looking at Patrick's work.